Hello, friends. Hello. Welcome back to our moon video. Raquel here with our infinite nature. And of course, Sarah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> with Hello Fluid Collective. So we are excited to come to you today to talk about the Libra new moon with partial solar eclipse. And one of the things I want to say just to start this video is if you are feeling inspired to act, if you're feeling like, I gotta, I gotta make some moves, even though it's still eclipse season, please know you are totally feeling the energies of this Libra new moon that's happening on October 2nd. Um, I know we've talked a lot about eclipse season. And one of the things I actually love about eclipse season is a little bit of a permission slip to do a little less, a little bit more of a permission slip with eclipse season to act less and be more present and allow the universe to kind of move things around the way the universe wants to for the highest, happiest, greatest good for all. But with this particular lunation, there is definitely an energy of action that's coming into play. But what's interesting about it is that it's it's acting us to act not just for action's sake. It's acting, it's mm -hmm. asking us to act from a place of alignment, from a place of authenticity, from a place of balance and connection with our truest, most authentic soul desires and goals. And I believe that the lunations we had leading up to this particular Libra new moon has helped us kind of clarify what feels in alignment to us and what doesn't necessarily feel very much in alignment with us. So that's a lot of what's coming through with this Libra new moon, and we're going to dive more into it. But first, let's just talk a little bit about Libra. Sarah, what what is yeah. when you think about Libra, like what are some of the things that come to mind when you think about Libra energy? Yes. So I'm actually a Libra moon. So Ooh. really feel into that Libra energy. Oh my goodness. Um, Wait, hold on. This sign. eclipse season is like hitting you because we had the Pisces full moon Girl. with eclipse and your Pisces. <laughs> and now here we have the Libra new moon with Soli and it's your moon. So my friend, Thank you for being here with yes. us, sending you some extra money support. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's a wild ride. And for me to just show up is a big deal. So I appreciate the you. recognition there. Yes, it's been, woo. Um, so yeah, Libra to me, it's, you know, most obviously it's an air sign. So it's going to be about the intellect. It's going to be about communication, um, but it's also the cardinal air sign, which means it loves to initiate. So you're totally right there about this new, this new moon being about initiating things. Obviously a new moon in general is about new cycles, but especially one in a cardinal sign is going to bring lots of energy of like, okay, I'm ready to start something new. It really doubles down that new moon cycle energy. Libra is also very, it's represented by the scales, right? Yeah. The balance. And so it can really see both sides or multiple sides of a story. Um, and it really just reminds me a lot about like law and justice, because it's about seeing all the sides and making a fair decision. Um, and some, you know, the some people say, oh, Libras can be indecisive but I think it's a beautiful thing because they're indecisive because they're like whoa I can see the truths of yes. both sides yes you my know? my daughter is Libra and that a hundred percent happens to her well first of all she loves to do things on her own like she loves to learn through experience she loves to act and to like take like make things with her hands and like she always has ideas she's extremely cerebral but when she has choices, sometimes like, oh, do I want to go to this birthday party or this Girl Scout event? And she's just like, huh. it's like she cannot yeah. make a decision because like she literally is like, I want to do both. They're both great. I don't yeah. and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Oh, that's a big part. Yes. Like the people pleasing is another aspect yeah. of the Libra that can come in. We're definitely working with her with that. Um, but for sure, there can be that kind of shadow side of indecision. But but I I love what you just said. It's not indecision because of a sense of confusion. It's indecision because they really can see the benefits of both. Yeah. And so it's hard to they make. They can see it all. 
Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I get it. My brother's also a Libra and he's very independent, really does his own thing. But it's like, hey, where do you want to go for lunch? Oh, whatever. You know, <laughs> it's Yeah. like, that's not helpful. <laughs> Give me some options, you know, but Yeah. it's truly just like, oh, I could find some joy at whatever option you pick, Yeah. you know, Yeah. so. And Libra, I mean, Libra is just so enamored with equality and equity. Um, and Yes. it's an interesting thing because I don't think we're ever guaranteed. Unfortunately, I don't think we're guaranteed fairness in this No. world, especially in, you know, human society. I think when we look at nature, we, we can see how nature strives for balance, which is, you know, what Libra is really all about is balance. That's what the scales do is balance the weight one side or the other. Right. Um, and so I, I, I just, I feel as though sometimes there can be this sense within Libra of putting themselves aside to kind of find that equity, equality, balance for others. But that's where kind of that, that sister sibling sign of Aries can come in for Libra to help them recognize that to find the balance is to balance your needs with the needs of the other as well. Yes, exactly. Because the Libra is ruled by Venus, there is a really big highlight of harmony. Yeah. And so that's where those people pleasing tendencies can come in, which is like, let me put like exactly what we said, let me put my needs behind so that we can just have some compromise Yeah. in this situation. Yeah. So we'll get into this later, but there is a lot of Mars energy with this moon as well, too. So I think that will be a nice balance to this Libra energy that we're feeling of like, okay, but how can I assert myself and achieve cooperation and achieve compromise? Yeah. You know, Yeah. I think it'll be a really nice blended of all these th blended energy of all these things. Yeah. And Libra is really well known. I mean, you had mentioned communication, like an air sign. So communication is really big, equity. Um, but I think Libra is also really, really uh, focused on relationships and, and relating to other people. Um, and so I think there is that kind of that balance and relationships that come through as well. One of the things Libra is really well known for is diplomacy, is compromise, like you just shared. And For for sure, that's something we could use a little bit more initiations with in this world right now is a little bit more initiatory energy toward compromise diplomacy from like a larger scale. Now, one thing that's interesting about Libra, you mentioned cardinal air sign. One of the things I note with my daughter who is a Libra is um, she's so cerebral. <laughs> she can just be so in her head. Sometimes I have to remind her, like really get into her body. And one of the things that I've been feeling into intuitively with this particular Um, new moon in Libra is kind of utilizing some of the other elements to help us kind of ground that air energy into action. Um, because air can be Yes. really like nebulous. It can kind of just like, freeze through. So it's helpful. Like air can bring in these wonderful ideas, um, these motivations, these inspirations. But if we don't have earth, to kind of ground that idea into reality, it can just whiz right past. If we don't have fire to actually motivate us to act on those ideas, then they can just remain as ideas. And we don't have water to help us kind of into it and feel into which of these ideas are actually in the best alignment for us, then we can just be swirling around with tons of ideas and feeling overwhelmed and not really knowing like, Yep. how do I act upon these? And one thing that's really cool about the astrology of this particular new moon in Libra is that we have some really supportive water coming in Yes. because of this beautiful grand trine we have with all three of the water signs. We have Mars in Cancer, Venus in Scorpio, and Saturn in Pisces that are all creating kind of like a triangulation, a triangle called a trine. It, it's like 120 degrees when you add them all up together to make a trine, Mm -hmm. correct, Sarah? Um, Yeah, usually a trine is just with two that are, um, but the grand trine is, three. you know, it's a whole triangle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and it's a grand trine is when it hits all the signs of that particular element. So right for this exactly. particular new moon, we have a grand trine in water. Water. Yep. Correct. And when I think about water, I think about emotions and I think about intuition because water is really the element that most aligns with intuition. And so we have actually a lot of like really powerful intuitive support around this particular new moon. And the way that I feel into this is that it's it's almost like it's giving us the intuition of what it's best for us to take action on. If we yes. can give yes. ourselves the time and space during eclipse season, like we're supposed to do to just reflect a little bit more, to be a little bit more open, receptive, more times to meditate and just receive some of the guidance that's coming to us, both from our intuition as well as from spirit, then we can actually feel motivated to take action on these themes that will be in our greatest benefit. So that's kind of what I'm feeling from this beautiful grand trine in water. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, Sarah. Yes. No, yeah, that's really what it is. Because actually right now, we really don't have much in fire signs whatsoever. We only have Chiron in Aries. And the North Node, which some people don't even look at when doing transit astrology. So everything else is, we have, you know, air, we have water, but there's really not much fire going on. Mm -hmm. Um, So to me, what that says is that it really is about tapping into how we're feeling, which is where I feel that we understand alignment from. Mm. fire can have us acting a little bit just like go 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 you know like yeah but having you know there's some earth in there too it just feels a bit more like okay let's tap into how we're feeling and use that to take action from especially because mars is in cancer and will actually be in cancer for an extended amount of time yeah because it'll be there until december doing its normal cycle and then, or I think a little bit before that, but then in, De- in December, it starts to retrograde. So Mar- Mars retrogrades only once every other year. Um, so I'm getting so excited. January, I don't, I, I just, I'm I sorry know. to interrupt, but like for some reason, when you said Mars is going to retrograde, my whole body was like, yes. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that's, in- so I know <laughs> I'm getting something intuitive here, but like my whole body's getting really excited as you talk about Mars going retrograde. Good. And I don't even really know what that means, but like my body's like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. So go on. Well, sorry. It's happening. A, a big portion of it is happening in your sign of cancer. Oh, so well, there you go. <laughs> I feel like it'll be a great time for you to just, you know, I mean, I like Mars retrograde because it just kind of slows action down a little bit and especially for it to happen in the winter, which to yeah. me just feels like a time of slowing down anyways. Yeah. yeah. You know, it just long feels sleep. like a really welcome time for it to happen. Yeah. Um, it there is a part of it that happens in Leo, um, but in January I through like that too. My body's like yes, excited about that too. How I feel a like Mars in your chart I, for you. I, I feel like Mars, like, and maybe I am just picking up on what it's going to be for my, for my energy, my chart. But I feel like Mars is like kind of like I want a vacation. Like I want to like yeah. yeah, please put me in a timeout. Like I I kind of yeah. Mars is like, I'm here for this. I'm I'm ready to retrograde a little. I mean, yeah, Mars is, you know, the planet of war. So it <laughs> would be nice to be like, go take a little break. Time out. Time out. Be free. We'd be really appreciative of go, that, Mars. Thank you. Right? Yeah, exactly. Maybe not the Mars and Leo part, but <laughs> once it comes back into Cancer and is retrograde, I'm all for that. I'm yeah. all for that. Yeah. Yeah. Just like go feel some feelings, go get intuitive. Yeah. We could all use that. So yeah, it'll, it'll be there until April, 2025 actually. And what's interesting too, because, you know, we had the last lunation was a Pisces full moon, very watery, very much helping us be in the energy of flow, flow with what life is giving us. And now with this particular Libra new moon as we're being more inspired to take action with the solar eclipse with the new moon itself we're inspired to take action from a place of emotional alignment yes from a place of 
of, again, not forcing or controlling because eclipse season is always a beautiful reminder for us to, to release that grisp, grisp, grasp, grip and grasp. <laughs> grisp. Both of them. <laughs> Yeah, so like the eclipses are really trying to help us learn to like loosen our grip a lot and just learn to kind of ride the waves. Yet there's also always a reminder to us of our co-creative capacities, our co-creative powers. And as we're with this solar eclipse, moving toward the end of eclipse season, which I don't know about you, but I kind of feel eclipse season start at the lunation before the eclipse and end at the lunation after. So I don't feel eclipse season end at this Libra new moon. I will feel it ends when we get to the Pisces, Uh Aries, Aries full moon coming up in October, right? Yes. Aries full moon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when we get to that Aries full moon, eclipse season will be over. This eclipse season will be over. That's that's the way I feel it. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Um, And some astrologers also say that eclipses can flavor the next six months, really. Yeah. Some people say a year and a half, 18 months. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So maybe not as like intensely, but I do like the word flavor to kind of give a little like, here's what the next six months might be. And that's just really supported by the other astrology too, of just lots of water signs and a lot of planets kind of finishing their transits in Mm -hmm. water signs over the next six months too so we're gonna get you know neptune and saturn moving out of pisces next year yeah from what i understand next year all the major planets are moving signs is that correct i mean we'll have to do a a year ahead (laughs) yeah we will pluto will have moved back into aquarius this year but yeah well, Minimum. it'll finally be in Aquarius for the next 20 so years. So yeah. yeah, that'll, that happens this year, but we'll definitely be feeling the impacts of it next year. Yeah. And Jupiter moves every year. So yeah. So Saturn, Neptune and Uranus doesn't move until 2026. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. But going back to this Libra new moon, I like what you just shared about like the duration of time, because when we talk about new moons, we talk about like new intentions, manifestations for that particular lunar cycle. But when we're talking about a new moon paired with an eclipse, we can really talk about the fact that we can be manifesting or creating intentions, setting, setting the scene, setting, planting the seeds for um, intentions that will probably play out for about six months. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a new moon that we're going to flavor the next six months for us. So when you think about setting your intentions for this Libra new moon, when you're feeling into what do I want to take action on? Really think about how is this going to flavor my life for the next half a year or so? Like, how is this something that can bring joy, bring fulfillment, bring purpose, bring alignment to me for months to come? Um, that could be part of, you know, your little manifestation ritual for this particular Libra new moon. So yeah, the Libra new moon is inspiring us to take some action, but it's not action just to act. It's action for alignment. And the solar eclipse energy also is a little bit more spurring us on toward action. Lunar eclipses are way more about like our emotions, our relationships, Solar eclipses tend to be a little bit more about actions and we tend to feel solar eclipses more on the collective. Solar eclipses tend to have a big impact on world leadership. So it tends mm. to like like politicians, see, like people who have big leadership roles, solar eclipses tend to have big change impacts or transformational impacts on leadership in particular. Um, but what we feel yes, is more okay. a sense of like actions in our daily life as opposed to just like our emotional selves. That, that's the way I, I feel right. into it. Um, and yeah. the solar eclipse, it's not, it's not a full solar eclipse. It's partial. It's only going to be visible in parts of like the remote South Pacific, Southern Argentina and Peru, I believe. So it's not visible to everyone. Very, again, just a small little partial part of it is being eclipsed. But again, the energies are still one of creating a shadow over a light. Eclipses are interesting because I find that they both create a shadow over what is our light sources. So they shadow our luminaries, but they also bring light to areas that are shadowed. So sometimes eclipses have this like dualistic approach of sometimes they create more 
confusion, a little bit less clarity, and then they kind of create like an epiphany of more clarity all at the same time. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Well, when we're not focusing on this, it just brings our focus yes. to something else. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It highlights something different. Yes, exactly. And so when I'm feeling it intuitively to the energy of this particular new moon, I get a lot of activation in my third eye, my heart, and my solar plexus, which when we think about those particular energy centers, those chakras, third eye is about our intuition, like being guided by the intuition. Yes, it also brings into account our intellect and the mind, but when we think mm -hmm. about the third eye chakra, it has a really, really big relationship with our intuitive nature, our psychic bodies. The heart is about our um, relational selves and our ability to feel others. And then our solar plexus mm -hmm. is our space of personal power. So I kind of feel like there's this sense of really aligning our intuition our relationships, our, our sense of community, our sense of being a part of a greater whole with our personal power of our actions. Um, yes. Again, that alignment, that sense of creating alignment in the actions we take. So that's kind of what I've been feeling intuitively as, as I feel into this solar eclipse. Yeah. Um, anything else you're picking up intuitively or astrologically you're seeing in the chart, Sarah? Yeah, so I know we spoke about the the trine and just I think I got a little sidetracked there. I just wanted to solidify it just with a little conclusion here of, yeah. you know, there's a really nice conversation between with Venus and Scorpio. It's asking us to get really real and authentic and uncover hidden truths mm. within ourselves, within our relationships with others. Um, and our value systems. Yeah. And that's working in harmony with Mars in Cancer, which is all about taking action from a space of our intuition and our emotions and bringing that into the way we assert ourselves. And that and is nurturing. all those. And the nurturing, right? Yeah. And protectiveness yeah. as well, too, to the things that really matter to us. Yeah. And then those two are working in harmony with Saturn in Pisces, which is, I mean, with this new moon to me, it feels like the Saturn in Pisces gives us a little bit of boundaries mm -hmm. so that we have the space to feel into these feelings fully, but still drawing the line when we're getting to a space of feeling too overwhelmed and out of control. Right. That makes sense. Right. So all these things are working together, of like allowing us to really feel, but that Saturn is like, but we're still going to, you know, keep it in a space where it's reasonable. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, you know, it's not, it's contained. Yeah. You know, in a way that we can actually do something with it. Yeah. And then to bring it all together, this new moon is, because that's when, you know, the moon is conjunct the sun, both of those are conjunct Mercury. Ah. So that brings a lot of mental clarity into this as well, too. Anytime the sun is conjunct Mercury, it's called, it. some people call it a, um, a Kazemi, a Mercury oh, yeah. Kazemi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is just like the sun powering Mercury. So it's just like giving it a lot of energy, giving it a lot of life force. Um, and Mercury is all about communication um, our mind, our thinking patterns, our learning processes, and with it being in Libra, which is also kind of about those things yeah. um, in a different way, I just feel like there's a lot to be had from looking at our communications with others, with ourselves, um, and there's just some healing opportunities through and there's a support also of having harder conversations that could then just lead to some breakthroughs like, oh, okay, now I can see eye to eye with this person. Now I can see eye to eye with this concept, this group of people, whatever it may be, yeah. that can really just have you feeling like not so locked up about certain yeah. things, whether it's about yourself, whether it's about certain people or ideologies, whatever it may be. Yeah. And then the last little piece is that the following week, we have Jupiter sextile to Chiron, which 
when we have a Jupiter aspect, it's going to last a few weeks because it is a huge planet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an outer planet, so it moves it's slower. So energy. You know, it's, it's the massive, most, I mean, right? the most expansive. That, like, that's one of the right. big things is this expansion. So, yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and it's working in harmony with Chiron, which is all about healing mm -hmm. those deeper wounds. So to me, it just gives a, another flavor of healing through expanding our perspectives. So yeah. maybe having those conversations and we can be more compassionate towards each other. We can be more compromising towards each other, but still in like an assertive way. So we're not being a pushover, right. but we can, we're just more open yeah. to seeing things from a different view. So I really do think that there's a lot of potential for like long-term harmony to be created from this. Wow. That is so beautiful, Sarah. It actually like brings tears to my eyes a little bit because like, <laughs> I mean, that's so what we need in this world right now is we need to have honest, heartfelt conversations where we're not demonizing each other. And, um, you know, like right now people won't even have conversations around things right. that they have opposing views on. And we're never going to get to a place of peace and harmony if we won't even talk to each other, if we dehumanize people who don't think the way we do, you know, like it, it, we can just never get, we can never get to where we believe we can go, where we want to go, a place of greater peace, harmony, sustainability, joy, all of those things. We can't get there if we're not willing to to live is open like be open and have conversations and recognize that there's a multitude of perspectives out there and that's a good thing i mean so, okay so for those who don't know my background's in ecology and environmental sciences and marine biology and marine biodiversity and one of the things that is such a huge huge truth when we talk about the environment and ecology is that biodiversity is so important. It is life insurance. Like literally it's insurance for all life to have diversity of species, diversity of cells, diversity of life. And that is the same when it comes to diversity of thought, diversity of yes. experience, diversity of religion, diversity of culture. These are not bad right. things. These are good things. This increases our perceptions. It increases our perspectives. It keeps us open to the more that actually exists in this world, which brings up another interesting thing that we didn't even talk about, but I think might come up, which is the mini moon. Yes. <laughs> um, How fun. And the reason that that popped into my head right now is just when I talk about the more, because I think we humans can get so bogged down by the three dimensional, like what we can see, hear, feel, touch, taste, all of that with our senses. But we actually live in a multidimensional reality mm -hmm. where there is so much more that exists through our multi senses, not just our physical yes. senses. And when we have this little mini moon, which Sarah's going to tell us a little bit more about, that is kind of orbiting around right now, it's a reminder to us that there is so much more other galaxies, comets, just space debris. I mean, like there is just so much to this thing we call life. Right. Um, and I think this mini moon is just a little reminder of that. But I'm going to have Sarah tell us a little bit more about this mini moon because you might have heard of it and you might not. But Sarah, go ahead yeah, and tell so us. So if you haven't heard about it, um, starting next week, um, first week of October. And I think it goes into mid November yeah. or something like that. I don't have the exact dates. They said it starts um, the 29th. Don't, it, the only reason I remember that oh. is that's my daughter's birthday. So September 29th yeah. is when they say it's going to like have its or start its orbit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to come in um, and it's going to do, I think one, maybe two full rotations around earth. Um, so it'll kind of be hitting you know, a majority of the signs, astrologically speaking. Um, I think it's fun. I think it's cool just to be like, ooh, we have this new thing in our orbit, you know. From an astrological point, though, however, 
on a personal stance, I don't necessarily think this is going to really impact us. Like, I don't think we're really going to feel it. Yeah. Um, you know, when we think of our moon, we think of emotions, we think of our private selves, our inner selves. I don't think that this is going to be like that. I mean, the planets in our solar system, they've been there since, you know, we have been human. So to me, that's where I feel like the connection comes like we've been circling with these planets for so long and that's, you know, why they have an impact on us. I don't know what comes first, but we just have this deep connection with these planets because we all, we've all been here together, you know, like yeah. we were, you know, evolving while they were there, essentially. Yeah. Um, this little mini moon that's coming in, it just got here, you know, it's a little newbie. It's a little space alien, if you will. I think it's just here doing a little rotation. We can, you know, be fascinated by it. I don't even think people will be able to see it. I don't think so unless either. Unless they have a telescope um, or something like that, which I do have. I don't know why. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, you need like, a, like one of the like machine telescopes. To oh, see the what. big, big ones? Yeah, okay. I don't think like just your goal. I was going to try anyways. Well, go for it. It's go rather it. extensive, yeah. but it's not like, you know, at the, <laughs> at the science center <laughs> yeah. at a telescope. Yeah. Um, but if I could see anything, I will post it to my social media. So make sure you follow me. <laughs> I'll share it with you, Raquel, as well, too. If there's anything out there, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a fun little kind of quippy thing. Yeah. I don't think we need to be fearful. I don't know. Oh. Think... oh. I think we just accidentally froze. Let me pause for a second. Okay, sorry about that, friends. We're back. We just had a little bit of a technological snafu. We lost the internet for a second. Sarah's internet went completely out, so she's joined us back on her phone. As we mentioned at the start of this video, Sarah's chart is being hit real tight with this eclipse season as a Pisces yes, sun and a uh, Libra moon. <laughs> So yeah. thanks for thanks for joining us back again, Sarah. We're going to just finish up talking about this mini moon. And um, we were just talking about how you had mentioned that the mini moon is something brand new to us. We don't already have yeah. a, like a, a collective personal relationship with whatever this thing is. Right. And I'm not really sure if it's like an asteroid, if it's a chunk of yeah. something. I mean, it's like I kind of it's an asteroid. Just, yeah, it's an asteroid. Yeah. So which is kind of like a space yeah. rock that's moving through space yeah it's like literally like the size of like a, a bus it's not oh. even that big oh okay yeah 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 so if you guys yeah. are starting to see any information about the mini moon whether it's like astrologically or astronomically again it's just a cool little thing and it's i what i'm picking up intuitively around this mini moon is just a beautiful reminder to us that there is so much more to our existence to life than what we have previously believed. Um, that's a big part of it. And, and I see that as being a really beautiful reminder to us as we're in this time where consciousness is rising, despite the war, despite the bigotry, despite these blips we're having of um, human devolvement. <laughs> I still feel like the, the overarching theme for us as a collective is continued evolvement toward a greater sense of consciousness and our greatest sense of our place in the greater scheme of life itself. And so for me, this mini moon is just a little reminder of like, guys, there's so much more out there. There's so much more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just so come it, in here, do a little circle to be like, Hey, just so you know, there's more. Yeah. And, and yeah. please, you know, like be aware when you're following anything on social medias that are just trying to scare you. It's it's really a tactic there. I see a lot of astrologers, psychic intuitives on social medias who just love to use fear as a way to get more clicks and views and likes. And I just want to um, just kind of remind you all that that's really a red flag. <laughs> Spirit guidance, intuitive guidance doesn't communicate through fear. Not ever. And astrology is not here to make us be afraid either. It is, uh, a, it's like kind of like a, a map. It's kind of like a roadmap to help us get where we want to go. But we are always the ones who drive, <laughs> who are driving the, car, the vehicle itself. 
and get to choose. Do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? We always have that. So just always want to state. Free will always precedes astrology. Yes. 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 So just to wrap up the energy for the Libra new moon with partial solar eclipse that is happening on October 2nd. This is a beautiful opportunity to take some actions that feel in alignment with your authentic goals, your authentic desires, your um, values, and to create a sense yeah. of harmony and balance within your relationships and within your your methods of communication. These are some of the themes that are probably going to be playing with this particular new moon, relationships, communication. Um, and a sense of balance within you. And then also wanting to act, wanting to actually take some movement forward, bring the momentum moving in a forward direction. I feel like the the Pisces full moon we had was, was kind of spacious. I feel like it created a little bit more space by allowing us to feel what we need to feel, move some of those feelings. And now with this space, we're getting filled and the openness that's created, we're getting filled with more of this energy that's inspiring us to take action. Um, so I hope that you all feel inspired to take some aligned actions. And if you're looking for some journal prompts or ways for you to kind of hone in on what those might be for you, please check out the moon blog. Um, I'll link it below. And Sarah, what would you like to leave everyone with today? Really just the second what you said of just your, there's mental clarity to help you figure out how you're feeling. So if there's any lingering question marks or paths that were opened up with the lunar eclipse in Pisces, I really feel like there's going to be some, maybe not full solutions that come with this, but at least understanding what direction to go in. So anything that was opened up, I really feel like this lunar eclipse starts to bring a little bit of closure in that cycle of it and moving into the, okay, well now what can I do about it? Love that. I love that. I'm sure we love that. (laughs) Yeah. Love that. And I love what you shared about like moving in the right direction. Cause I think sometimes I know I have the, my brain does this to me, which is when I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I'm like, I'm here and I know I want to get there. And my brain does this thing where it's like, I'm at A and I need to get to Z. And I forget that there's like all these letters in between, right? Like all, so my right. my brain likes to skip from like the beginning all the way to the end. And sometimes that actually paralyzes me because I'm like, oh, how do I get there, right? So there's just a really beautiful reminder when it comes to alignment and action. Um, it's just the next right step. It's just the next right step to get you a little bit closer to where you want to go. So if this new moon implies all you're going to do is make a list of what are some things you can do to take you in that direction. Yay. That's it. That's all you have to do. Okay. Don't even have to take the actions yet. You can just, yes. it, right. Like that's a beautiful way right. to work with the energies of this particular new moon and Lib- and Libra with the eclipse energy too. Cause remember with eclipse, we're not forcing, we're not controlling, we're riding the waves. And this wave is saying, take some aligned action. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back in a few weeks time with the moon video for the full moon coming up in Aries, which I believe is October 17th, something like that. Um, Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for being here. I know that this eclipse is like having an impact on you. So I really appreciate (laughs) the time to join us and share your wisdom, share your perspective, share the way that you look at the charts and your interpretation, because that's really what astrologers do is they interpret the charts as they see them. So we yeah. love your interpretation. Thank you for being here. Friends, thank you so much for yeah. being here with us. I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a beautiful new moon in Libra. I hope you're feeling inspired to take some actions that feel beautifully aligned for you. And I also hope that you give yourself the space to know that whatever it is you're trying to create in this world, it's worth it your time. It's worth how much time it's going to take for it to happen. It's worth it. It's worth the patience. It's, it's, it's worth you. Mm. (laughs) All right. We'll see you guys next time. And again, please like subscribe, copy, share, do all the things and you can find more information down below. Thank you so much, friends. See you next time. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. Bye. (laughs)